Lions for Superman and Boy. Yellow? Yes? Okay, yeah. Well, I've never really done any... Ba oh. uh, that That's a lot of money, yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll be there, no problem. Sure, okay. Yeah, uh, bye. Right, you were trying to get a hold of Lobo. <laughs> no, no, easy mistake, <laughs> of course. Uh, right, no, I, I, I figured that was the case. Okay, yeah, mm, bye. Hello, friends, welcome back to the show. So glad to see you once again, and if you're new here, you have come to the right place. This is the show where we talk about each and every episode of Superman, the animated series, breaking them down, reviewing them in a retrospective sort of way, and talking about each and every episode of the show, which I already said. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, please click subscribe and stick around because today we're talking about the two-parter, The Main Man, which originally aired on November 9th and 16th, 1996. Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. My card. I said it in the last episode, Stolen Memories, that I like these intergalactic, out-of-this-world kind of storylines for Superman. And boy, did I get what I asked for. Because this episode, we introduce Lobo, a intergalactic bounty hunter, into the storyline. And you can tell this episode was written by Paul Dini from... Batman the Animated Series fame, and you can really tell that he was having some fun with this character, and we'll talk all about that right after our 60-second rundown of the episode. Here we go. We meet Lobo on a bounty mission to capture this weird-looking weasel creature, and when he's on his way back to collect his money, he's he's captured by the Preserver to hire him to also uh, get Superman, because the Preserver collects all the last creatures of their, their kind, and Superman is one of those, the last son of Krypton, obviously. So Lobo goes to Earth, and there you have this huge fight knocked down blowing up buildings and, and punching each other out and Lobo makes eyes at Lois before he takes Superman back up to the Preserver and the Preserver says oh but there's one more uh, uh, last of their kind that I need and that's the last Zar Zartanian Zar uh, which is Lobo and so he captures Lobo that's the end of episode one episode two starts with Batman or Batman Superman uh, hires gets this rhino dino thing tricks them with his light of his watch to come in and smash into it there and then he talks to Lobo and he goes if you you promise to leave me and Earth alone, I'll let you go free. So they free him, and then they're working together to get it off the ship. The other bounty hunters show up at some point, and then uh, they, they finally are able to get... It's a two-parter. What do you expect? So Lobo and Superman have to work together to try to get off of this this ship and stop the Preserver. And Lobo, eventually, they have one final showdown. Lobo goes his separate way, and Superman goes back home. And But first, he gets all the other creatures that were the last of their kind and stores them in the Fortress of Solitude. Whew. I'm surprised they did it that fast, to be honest with you. The readings are off the scale. I mean, this is just a fun couple of episodes. I got all kinds of nostalgic feelings watching this, and not necessarily because of the episode itself, although I do remember bits and pieces of that, but just the way that the story is crafted and the way that the elements that are part of this episode with the other planet and the, the, the established stories with these other bounty hunters and this rogue group that comes together is just... It just felt very 90s and just brought back a lot of nostalgic feelings in just that type of story. And I remember really embracing these kind of stories. It just had that that feeling, that kind of out of this world, Star Trek Next Generation, Titan AE kind of kind of feeling for that. It was just a lot of fun to watch. All right. I don't need you. I'm the main man. You hear me, you rag frag and geek one. And this was really, truly my my introduction to Lobo. I, I I think when I watched this episode, 
I didn't know that Lobo was a real character. I mean, he came out in the 80s, so he isn't really that old, but he's a, you know, kind of your anti-hero character and and I don't I don't want to say that he was the first, but certainly one of them. Yeah, well, they're going to have to make do without their big blue babysitter from now on. And I think this had to have been his first visual, out, out of the comic book visual representation. Whereas I, I'm not always a big fan of the anti-hero kind of characters. He's just a lot of fun. Holy Frank Aroli! Feels like I've been torn apart! Ooh. And I think that, again, going back to what I was talking about in the last episode, having an opportunity to tell these stories seems appropriate with Superman. They did a bit of this, like, I, I think as a showdown where they introduced Jonah Hex in, in Batman, and it just it didn't feel like it fit quite. But this one, to go, hey, we want to tell a Lobo story, it seems to fit in this story. And certainly Lobo is the focus of these episodes, but Superman still has a big part to play in this. It isn't just they meet or or somebody's telling Superman the story of Lobo. Superman being the very thing that the that Lobo is hired to collect for the preserver. You deliver the last Kryptonium and the jewels are yours. Do we have a bargain? Close down a cage, boss. You're getting a new monkey. Which, speaking of which, does anybody else see the similarities between the preserver and the collector? Is it just me? I mean, which came first? Let me know in the comment section if you know which who came first. The I could look it up. I have Google, but uh, I would rather you guys tell me who who came first, the preserver or the collector, because they're pretty much the same character. Show yourself, you slimy geek what? I am the preserver. The, the comics that feature Lobo are pretty crude uh, at times. So I think they did a great job in this of making the character fun and keeping the essence of the character, but still keeping it kind of kid friendly and family safe. And, and they still get some great one liners in there from Lobo. Oh, yeah. Someone is definitely tired of breathing. Of course, voiced by Brad Garrett, who has appeared in a couple other uh, uh, episodes as Bilbo, not Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. That would be an interesting casting. Brad Garrett as Bilbo Baggins. Brad Garrett as Bibbo, and then also spoke for the big creature in Sideshow in the Batman episode. But this is brilliant casting on Andrea Romano's part. Ray Romano? Andrea Romano? Are they related? Is that how he got on Somebody Loves Raymond? Everybody Loves Raymond? <laughs> I am all over the place. Why, you dirty! Lobi, are you getting rowdy again? And I do have to say, too, I know there's been a lot of talk, especially earlier this year, about making a Lobo movie. And if there's any time to do that, I think now is the time because the success of Deadpool, certainly kind of the Marvel, one of Marvel's anti-hero characters, again, not to copy off of Deadpool, but to do DC, to do a movie, to tell a standalone story of Lobo in the movies, kind of intergalactic and kind of infuse a little bit of that Guardians of the Galaxy flavor into it. Uh, I think would really, if, if DC does it right and Warner Brothers does it right, it could really be a strong movie. I know there's there was some talk that Michael Bay was attached to, to do the movie at one point, but this would be the time to do it. Especially after watching this episode and kind of putting the pieces together that like, yeah, this is this would fit in today's day and age. Back in the 90s, early 2000s, there's no way they could have got away with making a Lobo movie. But now, I think it could happen. You pig! Ow! Ah, I like a baby who plays rough. Come on, let me have another. Right here, right here. Going back to a topic that we previously talked about, there's a scene in this episode where Superman, or Clark Kent actually, tells Lois the complete truth, that he's actually Superman. She doesn't even believe him. Well, Lois, the truth is I'm actually Superman in disguise, and I only pretend to be a journalist in order to hear about disasters as they happen and then squeeze you out of the byline. 
You're a sick man, Kent. I guess she's choosing that there's just no way that he could be Superman. And we had talked about this in A Piece from Home, and I know that caused a lot of discussion in the episode. And I, and I agree, some people had mentioned that they liked what Christopher Reeves did, where he played Clark Kent as a very different, vulnerable, clumsy, kind of nerdy kind of character. And I like that because there's no way that guy could be Superman. But yeah, in this episode, in, in the animated series... They really don't expound on that, but I guess that's got to be an implied element to it. Where did you say you've kept it all these years? I didn't. This certainly is a big story, and it's a big character, and there's a, there's a lot to accomplish in this episode. But I do have to say, I don't know, I should say, it didn't feel wrong that it was a two-parter. Like, I enjoyed the episodes, and I enjoyed watching them all the way through and it kept my attention but it is certainly noticeable that pretty much all of most of the first episode is a big fight between Lobo and Superman. I think I'll take five until I'm ready to resume kicking the collective butts of you and everyone else on this dumb heap. Ciao! But again, it's interesting enough and dynamic enough and it starts out in Metropolis and then it goes out to outer space that it didn't feel out of place. It didn't feel like, oh my gosh, this fight is continuing to go on i don't want to say that it could have been condensed down into one episode because i think it fit as two episodes but there certainly was again but i think superman is more of an action-oriented show so to have a fight like that and have the little quips and have the little elements uh, uh, the banter back and forth between superman and lobo seemed to fit it seemed to be uh, appropriate for the episode lights out clyde again they rooted it in metropolis in the beginning but then took superman by the end of the episode first episode took superman off the planet and pretty much all of the other episodes, except for the last part where he's in the Fortress of Solitude, yet to be named, I think, takes place off the planet on the ship of, of the Preserver. As much as I dislike taking a personal hand in this matter, you leave me no other choice. And again, we get to see the heart of Superman. He's a very trusting, loyal, good, strong, upstanding citizen, if you will. And uh, case in point, he just got done having this huge knockdown fight and captured by Lobo. And yet he trusts him when they sit down and say, If I let you out, do you swear to leave me and everyone else on Earth in peace? Of course, that's not going to happen. The main man's word is his bond, man. Ah! I also really enjoyed in this episode the plot device of using the when they're on the ship that the Preserver replicates the Red Sun, which kind of drains Superman of his power that he has on Earth from the Yellow Sun. Different way, different approach to, to making Superman weaker opposed to just, oh, I'm going to throw some kryptonite in here with you. But by doing that, he's able to kind of make him just your average Kryptonian opposed to a superhuman kind of hero. And now he's not relying on somebody else to kick away the kryptonite so he can regain his strength and beat everybody up. But he has to figure out how he's going to get his strength back. And it's when he finds the dodo from planet Earth that uses the yellow sun to replicate that atmosphere that the dodo was used to, that he goes in there, sucks that up, and is able to fight his way out. <laughs> So when it comes time to rank this episode, the challenge at this point is these episodes have been so dynamically different. Throughout this first season, as I had mentioned before, it's like they're really trying to find their footing and trying to find the style to do Superman in. So each of these episodes have been very, very different which creates a big challenge in trying to rank them against each other. So I end up placing it at the number three spot of my favorite episodes so far. Just below Stolen Memories, because I think that as fun as this episode is, I think facing off against Brainiac is a bigger threat, and there certainly was some more elements uh, showcasing where Superman came from and, and creating that dynamic and the difference between the two characters. But it does once again beat out fun and games because there just isn't much of a threat there between Toy Man and Superman. What about me? Same deal. So let me know, would you like to see DC and Warner Brothers come out with a live action Lobo movie? This may be in the works. As we know, things in Hollywood are very fluid, so I don't know if uh, it'll end up happening. I don't know if it'll be Michael Bay, but would you like to see a movie? And who do you think should play 
Lobo. I know at one point Dwayne The Rock Johnson was attached to play Lobo or they were eyeing him or whatever. Personally, I would have loved to see Ron Perlman play the role because he has the right mixture of of the wit and the the largeness and the voice and and those elements. Unfortunately, I think he might be getting a little too old for this type of role. But somebody like him, somebody I would like to see somebody in, in that style. But who would you like to see Lobo played by in the movie? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, just hit subscribe because we have new episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. And next up, we meet Lana Lang in My Girl. As always, I'm Andy Cano. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.